money arises because the state or the ideal republic, Plato's ideal communist republic, confronts its own material otherness. And it gives form to this otherness. It responds to this otherness in the form of money. Now, how does it confront this material otherness? Let's just say where this is a hypothetical scenario and it's on an island, right? To be the ideal state, for example, um, wants to exist in a certain way, but the material necessities of life demand it exists in another way. This humiliation necessitates the recognition of some kind of some kind of disunity, some kind of otherness of material premises versus the ideal, right? And it gives expression to this otherness in the form of money to maintain itself. Money is the state. It is the state. That's what money is. Money is the state in the economy. What is the state itself worth in the economy? Remember I told you, what is the state purchase for? What is the state worth? What does that purchase for? That's what money is. We didn't even talk about Plato yet. So let's answer our question. Answer. Money is the state in the economy. I talked to you before about the distinction between the, the different things and what unites them. First, I want to make a connection that Lacan did in his seminar, The Ethics of Psychoanalysis, already, which is between Plato's good and commodity goods. Lacan actually uh, says these are, it's not, for, it's not for nothing they're related, by the way. I don't even know the etymology of commodity goods, but it's not for nothing that they're, this, they're written the same way. What is the good? What is the good? Plato's good. The good is the form of forms. Plato resolves to answer the question of forms. There are discontinuities in space and time. There are different things. They have, they have, they have the consistency of form. They are coherent, intelligible, different objects, right? Different forms. Plato describes as the good, the form of form itself, the form of all forms, the form of all forms of reality. Plato used the example of the sun as the good, because on the one hand, without the sun, we would not be able to perceive reality, but on the other hand, you cannot look at the sun. For Plato, the form of forms is not itself a form. It's not itself, let's say, a worldly form. Phenomenal. Let's just say phenomenal form. Because this is ambiguous. The good, which is beyond beauty, justice, and truth, say it's higher than these things, better way of putting it, is form in general. The abstraction of form in general. The ultimate object and final object of thought. Sure, God, why not? Why not? The good is the monad. So, Plato first writes about this in the book, The Republic. The Republic. Which is a book about philosophy, not experimentation. But what the good is supposed to make you appreciate or recognize is that it's almost kind of similar to Heidegger, right? Heidegger, if you're familiar with him, talks about being and then being in general. For Plato, it's the same as far as the question of form and then the form in general, right? For different forms and then form as such, the good. Plato identifies this as the good. So for Plato, the good even in an ethical and moral sense of the word. It's the good in every meaningful sense of the word. You can, you can put it, right? 
Uh, it has all of the connotations and associations. It's not just one specific philosophical meaning. It has all of those ethical whatever implications you need. The good shows us that the thing, there is one thing, there is one good that makes coherent the whole of our reality. In a way, Plato's main contribution to the history of human thought, as far as I can see, is that Plato reveals that what makes our reality consistent and coherent, what allows us to have different forms, to, to perceive and uh, make intelligible, as I should say, make intelligible different forms, is the fact that there is a form first, form of forms itself. There is a form of forms itself. All the intelligibility of reality has all things that are intelligible within reality. So far as they are intelligible to us, this intelligibility has one common object. Just one common object. Plato's Republic envisions a universal and ideal republic that subsumes all of the um, human society as serving one common aim, one common ends, and one common object. Because for him, the republic is the form of the good, political form of the good. The republic is the highest ends of the society. It's the highest ends and aims of the whole of the human society. It's what people live, breathe, die, whatever for, for Plato. It is the ultimate ethical unity, right? It is the common object of all uh, activity, the Republic. Keep in mind what I said before here, because we want to keep our eye on, on the ball, which is what Plato can teach us about MCM and the corresponding implications for the question of how we no longer live in capitalism. For example so i just want you to be familiar with that platonic terminology right for now so as it happens it turns out it turns out the good has determinate form that is in the form of the state the state i just described to you that has a monopoly for example on the minting of currency thank you gizmo fisherman um the core subject is, I wanted to talk about Plato and the relationship to MCM and CMC for Marxist capital, because I was trying to tell a bunch of Twitter lefties that we no longer live in capitalism. The main point for Plato is that form is not given. Forms exist. There are different forms because of one single form which is the form of those forms themselves no we didn't enter into a platonic republic morlock we we transition out of a platonic republic actually right because gold money is platonic money it's good money it's the source by the way guys this is why we're never having a lecture stream again and I told you we're never doing them again, right? Because people don't want to fucking hear this shit. Every time I do it, nobody fucking wants to hear it. This isn't what gets views for Plato. We first have this one form as our object. And then reality is made intelligible. Then, consequentially... As a consequence, made intelligible and divided into different things. Isn't the ends and aim of our life singular? We have a bunch of shit in our lives, things, things in our lives, right? Different things, and they somehow have the consistency of form. Let's say a tree outside. You have the idea of a tree, the form of a tree, and its consistency in reality. Okay? 
But why? Don't you realize that insofar as the tree enters your vision, your sight, or your noumenal sight, let's say, as something intelligible, as a form, this is only an insofar as you are already given and delivered, in a sense, to a more fundamental object. Things that enter your phenomenal vision in life are not simply just there. You go outside and you see shit. They're not simply just there. To what extent, for example, is the idea of those things what determines them? That's why Plato's known for his thing about the shadow, the cave, Plato's cave with the shadows on the wall. Right? And the idea that there's a fire and that there's a bunch of shadows and that you don't actually see real things in reality. When you go outside and you look at different things, you're not seeing those real things. You're seeing shadows on the wall. Right? That's what he's known for, Plato's cave. So what makes your reality coherent and holds it together is one thing. The form of the commodity i'm just gonna fucking wrap this up and then and then go offline because you know 350 viewers nobody wants to see this shit so i'm gonna wrap it up really quick and then head out the form of the commodity or marks just commodity form what really is a form what is a form right in the sense what is a pure form the form of what something is insofar as something has a form it is, it's, it is uh, the way of something for you. It is the way something is for you, right? The way something is. But the way things are have an ultimate singular. The way things are are because of one way. This is Plato's monotheism. The way things are is because the whole of being is a way right all things are part of one reality trees shit uh fuck grass mountains whatever all of these things are the way they are because of the way reality is in general okay a commodity is a thing right it's a thing it's a thing that is exchanged so the form of the thing for use for exchange in the economy, the form of a thing in the economy is a commodity. Commodities, commodities are the forms. A commodity is the form of a thing in the sphere of economic change. And so far as it concerns economic exchange. Why are they called goods? Commodities also called goods. Because, because they are instances of the good and of the form of forms. Here, the ideal republic. Here, the ideal republic or its currency. Should I say money is the form of forms? I'm really just not content saying that. Or maybe I'm just fucking confusing myself. Because it's not. It's not that the state is the commodity and the money. It's that the abstractionism of the state in relation to people or its universalism leads to a relationship to human labor in general that is correspondingly abstract and correspondingly universal in the form of money. And that things become measured in this form, which is money. That's the point. Is money the form of the state in the economy? Like a commodity is the form of a thing in the economy? Yes. Yes, it is. Yes. A lot of people don't get Plato, right? Because you tell them about the good and the form of forms, and they say, what is that? How could I look at that? How could I interact with that? What, how could I see that? And Plato is trying to tell you he writes about this, right? 
that this is a kind of infantile, childish, misguided um, insistence. The whole point is what is the thing, what is, you're taking for granted the different things that are already within your reality, the different forms. Plato says the good is the form of form as such. It's outside of space and time. It is perfection. It is eternity. It is changeless. The form of form itself. Ain't that math? Yes, actually. It literally is. Literally is the object of mathematics. I'm not even kidding about that, by the way. It's like the whole reason this shit is happening. The whole fucking reason this philosophy shit is happening after Socrates is because of mathematics. It's all a response to mathematics. All Greek philosophy is a response to mathematics, actually. Yes, the emergence of mathematics as a discipline. Money, to not be confusing. The economic good. Is the state conceived as collectively or self-interested? What? The state is the common unity of the people. It is what the people literally are. It's the form of what they are. Their being. Money, the economic good. The commodity is in the economy. What is the state in? The state is the state. It is like the state of the people. Like think of the word state itself. Like the state of things. That's what the state is. So what is it in? It's... Yeah, like a state of being. Yeah, that's a good way of thinking about it. It's a very good way of thinking about it. If the state is the form of the people, does that make money the form of the people as they currently are in the economy? No, it does not. Because the state is the form of the people. When you say as they currently are within the economy, what do you mean? As they currently are within the economy. No, it's, you're just leading to confusion. Just say the state. The state is the form of the people. The people in the economy clearly is different from the form of the people in the state. That's why there's a distinction. Of the, that's why the economy is distinct from the state in the first place. Listen, guys. I've, I actually should, should have done this more, way more early on. The one thing that separates based from Reddit is Plato. It's the one, if you don't take, if you don't understand Plato, you are literally, your brain will always be in Reddit. You will always have a Reddit brain. You will never, ever, ever fucking understand what infrared is. If you don't fucking understand Plato. I'm not saying you have to agree with everything Plato says, but you need to understand it. You have to get it. If you don't fucking master Plato, you will never, ever, ever fucking reach any fucking level of red pillar based. Ever. If a form is formalized in context, what is the context of the state? The state for Plato is the ideal republic. It is the good itself. That is what the good is. It's the state. This idea of the state being the form of the people. Plato. Where Plato. Read it in Plato's Republic. I'm not even getting into like the Neoplatonism and shit. No, it's not the economic good. This is where I'm fucking having a hard time just describing this. Because then someone said, well, what about quantities of money? Wouldn't that be goods? This is so fucking pathetic, guys. I'm just pissed about the... F Honestly, I'm just pissed about the fucking viewer account. It's like, I waste my time on this fucking shit. Go fucking watch some e-girls with fucking 600 views. Blowing me out of the fucking water. Nobody wants to learn shit. You know what I mean? Nobody fucking even cares about this shit. Bunch of fucking little bitches. I'm not even going to bitch about it. But you know what I am going to do? Going forward, I'm going to ban every single fucking person who's like, How does this become so vulgar? Why is he always talking to e-girls? Why is he always uh, doing this 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 shit on Durka's show? Why is it because nobody fucking cares about this shit. That's fucking why. Nobody fucking cares. I promise you no one gives a fuck about this shit, man. Nobody gives a fuck about it. When I talk about foreign policy, literally shove foreign policy in your fucking ass. There is nothing more important before, before anything, before anything. Like, the minimum is understanding Plato and knowing how to fucking relate that to Marxism. 
Just the fucking foreign policy doesn't matter, dude. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Nothing matters. Except this. Money is an excess. It's an excess. That's the thing. Money is an excess. A remainder. It's the remainder of the state. A remainder of and over the state in its relation to the economy. Confrontation with its otherness. And attempt to account for its otherness. The economy. Human labor. Does Plato account for the otherness other than a moment of the good? System of the good. It's like every time the viewer goes down, I'm like less motivated to even bother trying to explain this. You know what I mean? Instead of finishing this, I'm just going to leave you with a question, which is why I did this shit in the first place. What is the ideal republic of 19th century capitalism? The British Empire, right? 19th century capitalism is almost wholly synonymous with English modernity. This is the geopolitical implication and significance of socialism. I'll just explain it like this, right? 19th century capitalism is English modernity. Its common social substance or its ideal republic is the British Empire, which remains occluded consigned to the background and taken for granted. This is why alternative industrializations that were independent of English capital or at least possessed a limited relationship to the um, concentration of English capital used for loans, etc., Japan, Germany, and later the Com Japan, Germany, etc., appear socialistic because they cannot take the ideal republic for granted and must establish its relationship to the economy. In they have their own ideal republic. It is in communism which undertakes the process of modernization manner entirely independent of the concentrations of capital established by the British Empire that this ideal public becomes explicit. Socialism means, repeat, the founding gesture of the founding sin and to resurrect the primal father of the ideal republic. And that is what is happening. This is my simplification for you.